So we've been studying solution reactions. And what we've looked at so far is identifying what's actually in our solutions. What we want to look at in this video is what we call double replacement reactions, where we're actually going to predict what our products will be just by looking at our reactants. Now we can just give a general uh, type of formula of how we would look at these double replacement reactions. Basically we have two ionic compounds. So we call this cation 1, anion 1, reacting with another ionic compound, cation 2, anion 2. All they're going to do is switch ion partners. So I'm going to take cation 1, and the new compound that's going to be formed with that is with anion 2. So we're going to form the new compound, cation 1, anion 2. And then our other compound is going to be cation 2 combining with anion 1. Now once we do this, we got to look and see, just because we've written it out and saying that we formed these two new compounds, we actually have to identify, does a reaction actually happen? Are we forming something new that wasn't present there in the solution before? So in order for us to look at that, let's go ahead and look at an example reaction. So let's say we have barium chloride, which is aqueous, it would be dissolved in water, and that's going to react with potassium sulfate. And now we have just been given these two reactants. Let's go ahead and predict the products. Well, one of them is going to be barium combined with sulfate to give us barium sulfate. Okay, and then we, we got to we got to connect these with the correct charges. So if I have potassium combined with chlorine, I wouldn't write it as K2Cl2. Right? I don't keep the subscripts here, I say, well, it's potassium, K+, plus, combining with chlorine, chloride, K, uh, Cl-. Minus. And so that would give us KCl. Okay, so now we've identified our two products. What we're going to talk about in another video is actually saying, well, between these two products, are we actually forming something new? We would see that our KCl is aqueous, so it stays dissolved in our solution, whereas our barium sulfate is going to form a precipitate, and that's because it is insoluble. So it doesn't form, or it forms this new compound that we no longer have barium and sulfate ions dissolved in solution. Okay, so when we have our double replacement reactions, we see that we must have some kind of driving force to give a reaction that actually happens. Okay, so what are some possible driving forces? We just saw one right here, and that was when we actually form a precipitate. So we form this precipitate, barium sulfate, it's a solid that came out of solution. Another one is going to be where we have water being formed. And we're going to see that that's from an acid base neutralization reaction. When they come together, they're going to form water. Third possibility would be looking at where we are actually going to form a gas. So one of our products is going to end up being a gas, so it's no longer dissolved in solution. So in the next few videos, we're going to look at each of these three different types of driving forces and how we actually predict is it going to be a precipitate reaction? Are we actually forming water? Are we actually forming a gas? So follow up in these next couple videos. They're going to show us each of these individual examples.